Hi there, I'm David Fuller from Eyes on the Sky, and about 18 months ago I made a video about how to align an equatorial mounted telescope. And I got a lot of great feedback on it, it's got a lot of views, and people have been really thankful and really supportive uh, of me making that video, and I'm really glad that I've been able to help a lot of people learn how to align those mounts, because they make it so much easier to be able to look at things in the night sky as the Earth rotates on its axis, and as the sky appears to move uh, in relation to it. But I've also gotten a lot of comments from people going, okay, now that I've aligned it, how do I use it? All right, I'm gonna show you how to use both a refractor and a reflector on an equatorial mount, and hopefully it'll make it easier for everyone to understand now how to use those equatorial mounts. So here we go. Okay, so as we look at a refractor, of course, remember, we're gonna start in our home position, which is where we wound up when we finished on the last video, we're pointing at Polaris. Now let's say that it's winter time and we're at mid latitudes or so, uh, of the northern hemisphere and we want to look at M41 which is about four degrees below the f brightest star in the sky Sirius. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our telescope in right ascension, we're gonna unlock the clutches first of course and then we're gonna move the telescope in right ascension and declination and have it point this direction because Sirius is gonna be about this direction in the sky so as you can see I'm not terribly well balanced so what we need to do is make sure that we are balanced by moving the telescope tube within there because it may change depending on what eyepiece you actually put in there. So you may need to adjust this every so often. If you put a heavier eyepiece in there or a lighter eyepiece in there or add a bar low and a heavier eyepiece, that oftentimes can change the balance of your telescope. You may need to adjust it as you turn it. So now we uh, aim our telescope, but notice that the finder scope, which you may not be able to see from here, is in a really awkward position. So I want to turn the telescope. So for me, because I like to use my right eye as I'm aiming, so I'm going to go like this aim it, and then I'll lock up my clutches. And you may need to even rotate where your star diagonal is. I want to be able to show you this so you can see that. Don't be afraid to rotate your star diagonal so it's in a position that makes it easier for you to be able to see when you point at the object that you want to look at. So you lock those clutches in, aim it at your object, use a low power eyepiece, set it in there, turn on your motor drive or use your slow motion controls and now you can look at the object that you want to see. If you use a reflector telescope you're going to do the same thing. You're going to unlock your clutches, rotate your telescope around. Now for me this might be a little bit more awkward to use with my left eye so what I want to do is I want to rotate my tube like this so I can now look through the telescope this way and aim it at the object I want to see lock my clutches back into place, and now I'm all set. Now you'll notice both these telescopes are higher than the counterweights of the equatorial mount. That's an important thing because we are east of due south of the meridian. The meridian, of course, runs from north all the way to south. It splits the sky in half into east and west sections. When you're looking this direction, you want to make sure that your telescopes are above your counterweights because when they're below the counterweights, that makes things really awkward. Notice how that looks odd, and your telescope is really low. It's not a good situation for how you want to use the mount. You want the telescope above the counterweight like this. The only time that's going to be different is let's say that your object is now rotated and it's not quite at due south, but it's pretty close. But you know you're going to watch it for a little while and it's going to go across the meridian. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to go up and across the sky and then it's going to start coming back down because it's going to set in the west. So it's going to go up a little bit and then come back down. This is where you can take your telescope and now you want to put your counterweight just a little bit higher. But look at what happened to our focuser. Now we need to rotate the tube around like this and what you need to do to be able to do that is you'll notice that there are some locks here. So you're going to lock your telescope in place, but you want to leave it loose enough that you can rotate the telescope tube within those rings. So you leave it a little bit lower and as you uh, let your motor drive go or as you turn your slow motion controls, your telescope is now going to rotate past the meridian, past that south direction, and now your counterweight will be below it. So that's a, a situation where that's okay to be able to do that. And you also rotate your tube so that you've got your eyepiece in the right direction. Same idea for our refractor. We're going to turn it this way. We need to watch out for the motor drive that we don't have a slow motion control run into it and go like this. We can lock our clutches back in place and look at the direction that my eyepiece is now facing. It's now facing down. 
So I wanna unlock that, turn it up so it's in a more comfortable position. But now, oops, my finder scope is in an awkward position. So now I need to turn that and now turn my eyepiece diagonal back up. So now I can use my right eye to find my object. My eyepiece is now gonna be in a comfortable position for me to be able to look at. So there's your south of both east of the meridian and west of the meridian. But what if you wanna look at something overhead? Not too difficult. All you gotta do is undo your locks. And let's say I wanna look at something like M13 as it's coming up. Same idea. If it's not past the meridian, I want my telescope on this side of it. So I aim it. Of course, now it's in a difficult position for me to get at, so I wanna turn my telescope tube and be able to look at M13. And this is something about ref reflectors that can happen, is the weight of the focuser is actually causing the telescope tube to move this way. It's not that everything is out of balance on the mount, it's that the weight of the, the focuser and the eyepiece is actually gonna make the tube do this. There's a couple ways around that. You can actually put a weight down here on the opposite side using a magnet if you got a steel tube, or you may need to stick something on there if it's an aluminum tube or plastic tube, and that'll help counterbalance the, the weight of the focuser. But you can then aim this way, you lock your clutches into place, and now you can track your object that way. You can, of course, rotate your tube if you need to. Always start with a low power eyepiece to find it first, and then you can bump up magnification. Now, if it's gone past the meridian again, you wanna do the same thing where you flip around to the other side, because you want your telescope tube above the counterweight, and then lock your clutches in place, turn on your motor drive, and now you can watch this may be an uncomfortable position because this eyepiece is now facing towards the ground. I may want to actually rotate the tube this way so that I'm either behind it, the, the, the mount this way or to the side of the mount like this. So now my eyepiece is slightly up, although then that puts my finder scope in an awkward position. So it does take some manipulating of the tube itself, particularly with a reflector and sometimes even with the refractor because you're going to unlock these clutches and you're going to come around this way, say, like this, and you'll note that where that eyepiece location is, look at this, it's aiming way down here. You may want it to be facing up slightly so you have it out this way, so it's at least facing up, and then you, for me anyway, I wanna use my right eye so I have the finder scope on this side. Now if it's gone past the meridian, I may have a problem with this particular mount because I got a motor mount here. So what am I gonna do? Well, it might run into it. I might need to wait either a couple hours for that object to rotate out of the way. I may need to move my motor mount out of the way entirely. And because of that, I may need to use the manual drive. Now on this mount, I don't have to worry about that so much because the only things that really run into each other are the declination and right ascension knobs occasionally when I have the tube around on this side. But with this, it's a large motor mount. It's a big one, it's bulky, it's in the way. It's in the way when I wanna to try to look at stuff overhead. You can see how that's running into that. That's a problem. And it's unfortunate it's, it's a less expensive mount and sometimes the less expensive mounts aren't designed to account for those things. You just have to work around it, either wait for the object to be in a different part of the sky, either by waiting a couple hours at night or wait a month or two for the object to rotate into a different part of the sky at the same time of night. Now, if you wanna to look towards the north, that can be a little bit trickier, but this is why it's so important to have these mounts balanced properly because you wanna be able to aim, let's say if you're looking at like M81, M82 near Ursa Major. That's a difficult one to actually get to because you're looking at that end, or I look at the end bowl star to find those. I kind of draw a line diagonally across the bowl and I go out a, a similar distance in that direction and that's how I find it. But the scope doesn't move easily in that direction. I kind of have to force it to go the directions that I want it to and it's not necessarily easy. But if you go slowly, you can move it in the right directions and all you have to do is move it and it's gonna stay where you need it to, provided you don't have some issues with your focuser, balance, you know, moving your balance out of whack. And then you lock it into place. You don't have to worry so much about left side, right side. You just obviously don't wanna be way the heck down here like this to be looking up that direction. That's not the way you wanna do it. You wanna have the telescope up above and then lock them in place, follow with your right ascension. Same idea with your refractor. You can move it up towards the northern portion of the sky, lock it in place, turn on your motor drive, use your right ascension knob to be able to follow things so that you don't have to move like an alt azimuth mount, like 
uh, a typical tripod for say like a photographic tripod that's going to go up and down and around a center post because to follow things that way you have to move it in two directions at the same time to follow the sky because the sky goes across a curved line in most directions because it's like taking the latitude and longitude of the earth and throwing them out onto the celestial sphere which we it looks like it's a, a sphere as we look up at the sky even though it's infinity it looks like a sphere and those lines go in curved motions as the earth rotates so it's much easier to be able to use this kind of mount for tracking those objects particularly at higher power so and of course they uh the fork mounts of Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes do a similar thing, they just do it in a little bit different fashion because of the way the shorter tubes are and the way a fork mount is designed. But hopefully that's given you a good idea how to do it with either a refractor or a reflector on an equatorial mounted telescope. I'm David Fuller, thank you so much for watching. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up.